A friend of mine asked me how websites work. He sees a web page and wonders how browsers know what to display, why buttons behave like they do when people click on them, why different websites can have vastly different designs, and ultimately if there's a limit to the possibilities of things that web page can show. Some of those questions were his, but some were mine in the past. I can imagine myself years back before I started web development when those questions came into mind. I'm a web developer now. I have limited experience but enough to make some interesting behaviors appear in the browser. I'll simply code websites to exhibit special behaviors and you can make conclusions on how websites work. Many web programming videos nowadays teach you how to code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript line by line. However, the fundamentals are easy and it would be inappropriate of me to go into such detail on unsubstantial content. So, I ask you to focus your attention and gather all you can from what I'm about to show you. I will build a page using JS Fiddle. First, I enter some text in the editor pane. When I click run, this is what it shows. Now I will show how the same text can transform into many things you will see on the web page. I can change it into a paragraph, a link, a header, an input, and a button, among other things. Yet the layout isn't elegant. It would be nice to see the texts arranged in columns like in a newspaper, so that's what I'll do. I want to focus on the button for a bit. When I click the button, nothing seems to happen. I intend to have my button show an alert. But instead of changing the original button, I will carefully construct an imposter that mimics every behavior that my button was supposed to have in addition to how it looks. I will use the link as this imposter. Isn't it ironic how the imposter behaves more ideally than the original? The link shows me an alert, but the button doesn't. Now I propose a question. Can there be a general imposter that is able to mimic the appearance and behavior of every element on the web page? How do we start thinking about this? First, the mimicking of appearance. Elements on the web can look a variety of ways and have their designs modified using CSS as you have seen with the link and the button. If I say there is a general imposter for appearance, I will need to prove that this imposter can take on any design of any element with any modification by CSS. It's not hard to recognize the audaciousness of this proof. Still, I know that this imposter exists based on one fact. No matter how an element is designed, its final appearance must be displayable on screen. Otherwise, you simply can't see it. Therefore, there's no doubt that the pixel, the atomic unit of the screen, and the constraint of all designs is the suitable imposter. In terms of behavior, this is also the case. Your interaction with any element is limited by what you see. As long as all pixels behave in the same way you'd expect the original element would, there won't be any noticeable difference. This is the proof in theory. Showing it in practice will require some effort. On modern displays, more than a million pixels might be present in the area of the browser window. Each pixel has four values for colors and opacity. Fully representing the appearance of a web page thus takes more than four million values, and those values have to be copied into individual imposters to create an identical web page. So, I begin creating these imposters by choosing the web page I want them to imitate. In this case, I just used Google's homepage. And then I start copying color values 
for all colored pixels, along with their positions within the viewport. I then fill remaining positions with white color values for the background. With all values collected, I can match the colors of my imposters with those of their counterpart pixels and recreate the entire web page on a pixel level. At last, an identical web page has appeared. It's clear that all element appearances have been successfully imitated. Were the imposters to do the same with their behaviors, I might fail to convince you that this is indeed a recreated page. So instead, I have the imposters behave very differently, in ways which are impossible for normal elements. Once again, I will do some transformations. I can transform the logo, which is supposed to be an image, into a paragraph, a link, and a button, and you see that they behave just as you'd expect them to. But in reality, none of those elements are real, and I have just been interacting with imposters. I can command these imposters to ring down the page or move around based on color value, and the illusion of the page will fade. The question I have been answering was, can there be a general imposter that can mimic the appearance and behavior of every element on a web page? I think pixels fit this description based on the example given. But with all my efforts spent showing imposters in action, I hope one observation becomes more apparent. Not only are pixels general imposters in the browser, there are also general imposters everywhere in a computer. Using the same logic applied earlier, it's possible to see that all other visible elements on your screen can be imitated by pixels. Although saying that these are imitations will be inaccurate, when in reality, pixels are what you have always been seeing and interacting with. They imitate everything in the graphical user interface, but the interface itself has never consisted of anything except these pixels. They are essentially imposters without originals. The files you can click on, the applications you can interact with, and even the OS itself are all just pixels changing colors, governed by logic written in code, scripted by programmers. So my friend, it may now come as no surprise seeing how the appearances and behaviors of a web page can be constructed so versatilely, when underlyingly the same imposters have always been at work, creating all that is visible on screen.